The games have started. Hi guys, I'm Jerry from Just Do It Thailand. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Hey Jerry, how's it going? Hi. Hey, what's up? Good to see you. I love the film and I love you guys because I just watched the film right out of the theater. Well, it made my day. Oh, oh thank you. Awesome. And I think it's a big task, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's Absolutely. a very big task. I mean, Huge we responsibility. Yeah, it was a, a you know a level of difficulty greater than anything we had done as filmmakers before, um, but also a, a real responsibility because there's so many people who love this game over 50 years, you know, and so we felt that responsibility. Fortunately, we, also... we had four years to spend on it, so we really <laughs> yeah. managed to be able to like take the time to to do it right. We're gonna need a team. But ultimately, what makes D and D universal is the spirit of fun, of collaboration, of spontaneity when you're playing. That's what we wanted to get across in the film. There's never anybody rolling dice in the movie, but you feel they're kind of up against it, working together as a team and doing their best to respond under impossible odds. So how do we pull that off? Uh, figure it out over a drink. Probably best. There's also a very loose sense of storytelling where you really don't know narratively where you're you're headed, um, and that is unique to D and D and also unique to a movie. It makes it kind of special and and unexpected when you're watching it. Follow me to the orifice. The orifice. I'll go last. You know, it's really credit to John and Jonathan for for casting the film in a way that you know they knew that we'd all somehow work together well and, and get along. And it's really hard to create chemistry out of nothing. And uh, so when we showed up in Ireland and we got a chance to play the game with one another and do the read through, I think it became very apparent really quickly that you know we had something that was going to work. And uh, and then the rest is just playing make believe. You know, absolutely. This I give you now. Trusting that you'll protect it with your very life. I will. Hold this. It was really good fun to play this guy who was a literal knight in shining armor. What happens when you meet the hero you'd expect to meet in a fantasy movie like this? John Goldstein talks a lot about that. Zenk almost feels like he was making a very serious movie on the lot just next door, and then accidentally wandered into Dungeons and Dragons and met all these idiots who have no idea what they're doing. Um, and chaos ensues. The higher the intelligence of the prey, the more likely they are to strike. Oh, that's a little hurtful. It's not just a fantasy; it's also a comedy. But yeah. well, you guys have been doing so many comedies over the years, and why do you say that? Whoa, well, this film must be a comedy. Well, I think we knew we wanted to level up, and so this was definitely the most ambitious leap forward that we that we've made, but one that we took very seriously in getting right. There's nothing more gratifying than seeing an audience uh, packing a theater and laughing at the right moments and crying at the right moments. It's like you're playing them like a fiddle, and and there's there's that you you know you don't often get the chance to do that. Feeling about this? Are you a fan of D and D? Yeah, obviously, a huge fan. <laughs> uh, I never played it, but I, I did get a chance to play it right before I started with my nephew, who's a huge RPG kid, and he writes his own campaigns and he draws his own maps. He's been playing with the same crew for six years, and and then I get a chance to play with the cast. So I had a couple of experiences before I started, but I'm not a I'm not a deep gamer. I didn't know much about D and D beforehand, but we did get to play as a cast. And that was enlightening. And so I got to see what oh. the spirit of the game is like. Mm. And it's just a bunch of people sitting around making jokes, laughing. <laughs> Fun. Well, it's basically it, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been saying. Yeah. Well, I know you're a bard in the film, but yeah. what would you pick? Which class in real life? Oh, a bard! I think that's pretty much that suits my my capabilities, <laughs> my interest level. What about you, Michelle? 
Yeah, if I had a character to choose that was closest to me, I think the barbarian would be it because my fantasy about myself isn't uh, who I really am, obviously. <laughs> I, I channeling my anger, the boys got it right. Like, I would totally be a, bar a barbarian. Oh, God, I could kiss you. Try it. <sighs> Which class are you? Um, I grew up playing paladins, actually. That's kind of my home base. I like that mix between the heroic tank factor, but also having some of those support abilities and those healing abilities. Um, so I think that there's a really cool balance to be had there. I'm glad he's on our side. I think we're probably all bards in that we are storytellers <laughs> yeah. and somewhat ridiculous. I'm a planner. I make plans. You've already made the plan, so... If the existing plan fails, I make a new plan. So you make plans that fail? No. He also plays the loot. Not really. Yeah, I love being a sorcerer. I've always wanted to have magic powers. That was a big reason why I did the movie, because I thought that that would be really fun. To have magic powers. Terumon Tergatis. Maybe I'm not saying it. Sophia, you play as a druid. What is that again? It's an owl there. In real life, in your own will, what kind of creature would you love to transform into? Probably a chihuahua pig. You were saying that earlier. I, I want to be a fish. I feel like that would be good. Like a deep sea creature. Hmm. Which is something so I can discover, you know, parts of the world that can't really be discovered by humans easily. Or a chihuahua pig. What? What, what would a chihuahua pig look like? You were saying it earlier. I don't know why you're acting like you weren't saying that earlier. <laughs> Sophia was ranting all day. She's like, oh, I wish I could be a chihuahua pig. I've never heard those words. <laughs> Ever. That you said them. No, that's not true, Sophia. It's... Don't gaslight me. Don't gaslight me. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Of course, the CGI and production is so huge. What do you feel to be in that world? There's a lot of fun. Obviously, there is a lot of computer graphics, but there's also a lot of uh, analog, real props and real uh, things happening on set. The skeletons in one scene were created and they were real. They were animatronic. So a ton of stuff was old fashioned, old school, old school craftsmanship. It really does. I think it makes a big difference, both for the experience for me as an actress, but also watching it in the big screen. I can just tell that there's things in that environment that I can touch. I don't think that digitally they've been able to capture what it's like to have a real creature just yet. I think work, working together, you know, uh, digital effects and animatronics is the way to go. Jankly. Jankly to you as well, good sir. He's interesting. Yeah, the fish eating a cat. Who is yeah, so cool. Uh, like, what? <laughs> I know, dude. That's all <laughs> animatronic, by the way. That's like a real, they made a real, like, fish, you know? They're sitting there with the remote control. It's so cool. So cool. I want to be that RC controller or something. Yeah, someday. <laughs> I know. He missed. Uh, which was hugely gratifying because then getting to actually live out your childhood dreams of like swinging a sword and slaying dragons and doing this with a real skill, working with some of the best stunt folks I've ever worked with, and seeing that on screen, I think it was a real passion for our directors. They wanted this not to feel like a green screen movie. Like it's a fantasy movie and yes, there's dragons and there's magic, but they wanted it to feel like you could touch the world. Um, and I think that comes through. I think it feel they feel thrilling um, and sometimes funny, even in the middle of all of that. The bridge is protected by an ancient trap. We must not trigger the mechanism. I may have triggered the mechanism. Sorry. Set decoration was incredible. Yeah. There was one scene that takes place in a fish market the scene with the fish, and it <laughs> smelled like fish. But you, you said you Dying what, fish. What's your buns you enjoy? It was immersive. Oh. There's also a scene <laughs> where there's a bunch of bones and dead people, and it smelled so like fish. <laughs> dead fish. I think they used dried squid or something to use this, like, to look like tiny bones. And mar like marrow. marrow and stuff like and, that. And, and, yeah. So that's why it smells so much like fish. It was very realistic. It was.
well, what is the biggest challenge on making D and D? I mean, the biggest, the biggest challenge with making D and D right now, I think, is that we live in a world where everything is a sequel. You know, everything is like a, a part two or a part three or a part thirty nine, and and like we've seen so much where people are coming to the theater for the things they've heard of, and so our biggest challenge, I think, we've made something that's as big and fun and as exciting as any of these other franchises that are out there. But our biggest challenge is like making sure that people give us a shot because I know if they do, they're going to come in and they're going to have their socks knocked off. They're going to get entertained, they're going to laugh, and they're going to cry, and they're going to see things they've never seen before because I know when they do, they're going to tell their friends how much damn fun they had. And that's on you. You have to spread the word. That's on me. Well, the movie does itself so good. I don't have to do much of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But whatever happens. Well, I love the film. I can't wait for the audience to see it. And Sophia, I took scuba diving courses, and I love under the sea. You, I'll be sure that you love the being a fish now. Well, okay, guys, great talking to you. See you again yeah, next you. time. Yeah, see you soon. See you next time, man. Right, Jay. I think. Thank you, guys, together. for making it together. Show. Thank you. All right, guys. Great yeah, to thank you, you so much. Bye. Go on, talk and buy. บอกพวกเราหน่อยครับว่าคุณอยู่เผ่าไหนในโลกของ D&D ถ้าคุณรักภาพยนตร์ก็อย่าลืมกดซับกดแชร์กดไลค์และกดปุ่มกระดิ่งแจ้งเตือนเอาไว้เพื่อไม่ให้พลาดหลากคอนเทนต์สุด e x c l u s i v e เจาะลึกถึงหนังกว่าใครที่เดียวที่จอดอ just do it พิมพ์จัสเลตภาษาอังกฤษส่วนดูภาษาไทย